Hey, it's a movie that positively portrays small town America. It's actually one of my favorite movies ever. It's the 1936 movie directed by Frank Capra, who you know from It's a Wonderful Life, but this one is Mr. Deeds Goes to Town. Let's talk about why this movie is great, why you should watch it, and what it means. Coming up next. <laughs> So the American director Frank Capra had a great run in the 1930s up through the 1940s. A lot of Americans know him well from his Christmas classic, which a lot of people watch every year, It's a Wonderful Life. About 10 years before that movie, you have this one, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, comes out during a great stretch run by Capra. He had made a couple of years before the absolute smash hit, it had happened one night, and in Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, he has a nice follow-up. In fact, I think this is his best movie, although that's definitely a controversial statement. You should tell me what the best Capra movie is down in the comments. Well, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town is about a small-town man who becomes the heir to a gigantic fortune. This man, Longfellow Deeds, played greatly by Gary Cooper, is a poet who gets paid for his work. He basically writes little poems for Hallmark cards and postcards. He's a tuba player, but he ends up inheriting $20 million from his New York City uncle who dies in a car crash. Now, $20 million in 1936 during the Great Depression was a humongous sum of money, one of the biggest fortunes of anybody in the United States. So what happens when this small town man gets told that he inherits $20 million? Nothing. He's got no reaction to this news that he's gotten $20 million inherited from his uncle. He left it all to you, Mr. Deeds. Deducting the taxes, it amounts to something in the neighborhood of $20 million. How about lunch? Are the gentlemen going to stay or not? Of course they're going to stay. She's got some fresh orange layer cake. You know with the thick stuff on the top? Mr. Deeds lives in the small town of Mandrake Falls. I'm assuming that's in upstate New York. And this town and the sensibilities of the town are contrasted very highly with New York City. Because quickly when Mr. Deeds learns about his inheritance, he has to go to New York City. In New York City, he meets a lot of people whom he ends up calling vultures. These are people, whether they're lawyers, whether they're dirty investors, who want his money. And they've got different ways of going about trying to get it. Now, Deeds seems like a small town, as we say, country bumpkin, very naive, very even foolish. But quickly you figure out that Deeds has a head about him has his own set of values, and knows how to turn down people who request money from him. I'll get you nowhere, Deeds. You know, we got letters. Will you show Mr. Heller to the front door? Yes, sir. And listen, there isn't any wife, there aren't any letters, and I think you're a crook, so you better watch your step. In the early parts of the movie, the people who want money from him, whether they're going to sue him, whether they want him to make silly investments, they are upper class people. They are well off. So this movie, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, just like Frank Capra's other work, is going to starkly contrast upper class versus lower class, with Mr. Deeds, I think, being right in the middle, a typical middle class American of this time. This is a heavily political movie, economic movie, as you can tell. And Mr. Deeds is a representative type, as I'm arguing, of small town, middle class America. This has a very typical city versus country aspect to it, where the country mouse goes to the city, as it were, and learns the hard ways and the terrible morality of the city. But Mr. Deeds is able to navigate New York City somewhat. The problem is the newspapers want to write stories about him. And in this movie, there's a newspaper writer, she's won the Pulitzer Prize, who's told by her editor to go get stories about Mr. Deeds. She disguises herself. She pretends to be somebody she's not. First, she faints in front of Mr. Deeds to win his sympathy and then soon they're hanging out together. That enables her to write salacious stories about Mr. Deeds, basically to write tabloid sort of newspaper articles about him and sensationalize him. And the idea here is that the press, the press in general, is not on the side of the small town man or of mainstream America. Well, Deeds doesn't know he's being defrauded by her, 
but he is able to detect fraud on behalf of everybody else. One of my favorite scenes in this movie is when Deeds goes to the investors and the board of trustees who takes care of his late uncle's estate. He's quickly elected chairman of the board in order to flatter him, but then he finds out, hey, we're paying for an opera house and it's losing $180,000 a year. Well, he is a small town with good business sense, cannot figure out why any enterprise is losing that much money a year, which of course is a lot of money in 1936. Well, they tell him he should just, you know, fund the opera because, well, it's opera, but he wants to make it into a for-profit enterprise. I personally wouldn't care to be the head of a business that kept losing money. That wouldn't be common sense. Incidentally, where is the $180,000 coming from? Well, we were rather expecting it to come from you. Me, naturally. Excuse me, gentlemen, there's nothing natural about that. Now, there's several events that happen in this movie that I won't spoil, but the thing I want to tell you is the ending. I love the last 20 to 30 minutes where this movie goes because by the end, Mr. Deeds actually wants to give away his fortune to as many poor men as he can, especially men who want to go have farms out west and try to make a new life for themselves. This being the Great Depression, there's a lot of hungry people and a lot of needy people out of work who need money. And Mr. Deeds realizes, I don't like my fortune, mo money, mo problems. I gotta get rid of this $20 million. That seems insane to most people in the movie, but to Deeds, it's not because the money is causing him chaos. Well, eventually, people actually call him insane and sue him and have him tried in a court of law as an insane person because, you know, he's giving away $20 million. What fool does that? So the last 20 minutes or so is a trial of Mr. Deeds involving lawyers, investors, and psychologists who want to call him crazy. And that trial is going to contrast, you know, big city, upper class people versus middle class people versus lower class unemployed people. And it's going to ask questions about whose side is the mainstream press on? We know Capra, Frank Capra, is a sentimentalist. So all of his movies have sort of some sort of sentimental element. Here in this movie, he's sort of typed by Mr. Deeds, who writes ooey gooey sentimentalist sort of poetry that's not very good contrasted with highbrow literary poetry. And the question for Capra is, who are you going to emotionally side with in this movie? Well, it's definitely Mr. Deeds, but it also has to be the mass of unemployed people. So I find this movie is actually, in a way, a leftist sort of populist movie. I say leftist because the movie condemns greed, having too much money. This is a typical leftist thing to do in movies of the 1930s and 1940s, I think. But you don't have a sort of devotion to socialist governance about the government giving money away. This movie argues very strongly for private charity, I think, by the end of the movie. Capra is a really, really great director. He knows how to make things exciting. He knows how to stimulate an audience. He knows how to pull on the heartstrings of an audience. If you've seen, as I said, It's a Wonderful Life, surely you're gonna like Mr. Deeds Goes to Town. And that makes this movie family friendly. I showed this to my three youngest children. They all three enjoyed it a lot. They laughed at it even, and it sustained their attention throughout the whole two hour runtime. That's because Capra really knows how to use montages. He knows how to spice up sort of the script he's given. It makes you really love the characters and know who to root for. And the fact that this newspaper woman is defrauding Mr. Deeds makes you really upset at the whole scenario here and hope that Mr. Deeds learns about her. I don't really like sentimentalism at all in movies. I don't like movies forcing me to have ooey gooey emotions that aren't really real or don't feel real. You could probably tell this from what I have put in my What Makes This Movie Great series, you know, like more hard edge, sort of naturalistic movies. But I find this movie by Capra and his other ones really touching and interesting, probably because, you know what, I'm a small town guy. I root for the small towns in general. I like the Midwest of America versus New York City, 
This movie has me, well, rooting for things I already like. And I think this is a pretty decent picture of what people wanted during the Great Depression. Not the Great Depression as it was, but some of the hopes and dreams that people had in America being showcased in this movie. You know, especially with the inheritance that Mr. Deeds gets, boy, don't we all just want to get rich quick, but then the problems that come along with vast wealth, and Mr. Deeds' values contrasted with that wealth. What did you think about this movie? Have you seen it? Let us know in the comments. Oh, and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for doing so, and thank you for watching. Have a great day.